office to come together with her to help her write a business plan, a case study uh, to take to her governor. Um, and the person who told me this story back in May was saying that um, they were just about to go and do that, to go and present it to her governor. So that's Abel and Sandra, um, empowered by their churches to serve God uh, in society. And I think about a church, uh, I'll call it uh, St. Martin's, um, and it's a church which you would describe as being, you know, right in the middle in terms of uh, uh, Church of England churches, a uh, liberal Catholic tradition. Um, and they would have described themselves as having a very narrow view of vocation. Uh, they would have described themselves as having a view that uh, a vocation, to, to, be, to be called to serve God, was either to go into the priesthood or to be involved in some sort of ministry in the church. Uh, they began journeying with us um, as one of our pilot parishes, um, and they started doing this thing called This Time Tomorrow, which I'll talk about uh, shortly, where members of the congregation stand up uh, week by week and talk about what you're going to be doing this time tomorrow as a way of recognizing the calling of all God's people. And after they'd done that for a few months, they decided that they'd open the church up midweek to have uh, prayer groups for people to come and pray about their everyday life. It's not just talking about their jobs, but talking about what their everyday life is like. Um, and the person who was coordinating it was expecting about six people, um, and 35 people turned up. And that's been running regularly, uh, uh, month by month. There's a hunger for people to know uh, that our calling as Christians is valued by, by the church, and more importantly, is important to what God wants to do in and through us across this country. And effectively, that's what setting God's people free is about. It's about asking the question, how do we enable the Church of England to play a fuller part in seeing God's kingdom come? across our towns, cities, and villages. That's what it's all about. It's not another initiative to kind of lob into the mix of things. It's asking ourselves that question, how well are we doing at that? And what things might we need to change in order to do that better? So we think about it uh, in this way. We think about it about changing the way we act, changing the way we talk, and changing the way we think, which kind of fit into each other. And there were two shifts that were talked about in setting God's people free that are deeply within our culture, things that we need to change about ourselves. The first shift was that we're not very good at equipping the whole people of God to follow Jesus confidently in every sphere of life. We put a lot of our resources into roles within the church, lay or ordained, but how do we engage with that bigger area of everyday faith? And there's something in our culture that stops us doing that, even if we, uh, even if we want to. And the second thing was about how do we enrich the mutual recognition and support between lay and ordained followers. We had it mentioned earlier on that uh, there is a sense of, of clericalism sometimes, uh, and it's not tradition-bound. It can be father knows best or mother knows best, but it can also in other churches be, I really should check that out with Steve if I can get that off the ground. It doesn't matter what your tradition is, it can still be there. But also, there's sometimes a bit of a codependency. There's a bit of people actually wanting a small number of people, maybe some of you in this very room, to, to be the people who do, who do things. So it's not as simple as just saying it's, it's all the fault of the clergy. It clearly isn't. But we've got these two shifts that we want to try and enable to happen. And as we think about that, as we think about that in the context of, of, of the lay people in the church, the 98% of people in the church who are not um, ordained or licensed, um, there are roughly three areas, of course they're connected, but there are roughly three areas that we're looking to see people um, resourced and empowered uh, to, to, to play a fuller part in. And the first of those is church roles. We do want people with the skills and gifting that God has given them to play part in our churches, uh, to play play part as, as ordained or, or, or licensed ministers, to play parts as church wardens on deanery synods, slash gatherings, slash networks, um, to, to, to be involved in the life of the church. We, we need the life of the church to flourish, and we want to encourage that to happen. We also want to encourage um, people to be involved in, in, in our communities. Um, it was excellent to hear Pete talk about citizens, and it's a wonderful organization to be involved in. And things like that are really important ways of engaging with others in our communities. 
But we don't want to just stop there at those kind of boundaries of church-based activities or activities that stretch out of the church. We also want to think about a bigger concept of, of what's faith in everyday life look like for people. How do we enable people uh, to be more confident uh, in faith, but also find God working through them uh, in the places where God sends us? And so setting God's people free is, is, is really focused on that last area. Uh, it's not that we don't think the other two are important, they are. In fact, they're part of the solution for enabling the whole people of God uh, to, be, uh, to be active in God's uh, plans and in God's world. So that's, that's roughly where we where, where kind of to give you setting God's people free in a nutshell. Um, I've got a lot of things that I uh, wanted to cover or talking through uh, with, with, with John uh, in organizing this that we thought you might be interested, but we've not really got enough time to do them all justice. So what I thought we'd have is a people's vote. <laughs> okay? Because that, because that is the thing that we want at the moment, isn't it? We want a people's vote, or maybe not. Maybe, maybe you can run out of the door. <laughs> So, um, so the, th the three rough areas, some, some input and thinking about the theology behind setting God's people free. Uh, what, what is it that we're talking about? What's some of the theological thinking that might be helpful? What I've described in my campaign speech here for you today, we will give you an insightful and world-changing theological reflection on why we feel frozen and not free. So that's the theology. Um, some practical steps, the things that we're learning through our partner diocese about how do we get that culture change happening. Simple yet powerful steps to shift our culture together to be the church God wants us to be. And then the third area, uh, thinking particularly about what part the deaneries play in this culture change process, which I've described as the genuine secret to making deaneries dynamic mission centers hubs of creativity and influence. <laughs> and all of those are campaign pledges, but success is in the ears of the beholder, not in the lips of the speaker. So what I want you to do is I want you to choose your top two of those three things. So what do you really want to hear? Do you want to hear the, the theology, the practical steps, or the how do we make deaneries dynamic, mission-centered hubs of creativity? So think about these top two. Okay. Um, got those in your mind? So if you're able, just stand up. So everyone in the room, stand up if you're able. Um, just because we're in the afternoon and we've all had a lot of cake, and you can feel that weight in you now. What cake? Stay standing if the theology bit is in your top two. So sit down if it's not. And sit down if it's your second choice. So you're still standing if it's your first choice. Wonderful, thank you. I've got a picture of that. Everybody back to your feet. <laughs> Stay standing if the practical steps, simple but powerful practical steps, is in your top two. And stay standing if it's your top one. Wonderful, thank you. Everybody back up. And stay standing if Deanery's uh, Dynamic Mission Centered Hubs of Creativity and Influence is in your top two. <coughs> Why are you here? <laughs> and still stay standing if it's your top one. Wonderful. And what that proves is people's votes don't work. <laughs> I'm still no clearer. No, I've got an idea. I've roughly got an idea. We are going to do all of them, but it's just an idea of the kind of waiting. So now, the waiting that I saw from that was theology is important. We'll do that, but shortened. We'll focus on the practical ideas and the deanery stuff a little bit more. That was the kind of bits of the waiting, but we will do all of it. So, setting God's people free to be the church and pursue the kingdom. That's effectively what setting us people free is all about. That's, that's the four bit. It was thrown at me when, uh, when the report was first titled when I was working in Southwark Diocese, that what does it mean setting us people free? Who locked us up in the first place? Are we, are we being set free from something, or are we being set free for something? Now, there are lots of things that are barriers to confident faith, um, but it's more important, I think, to think, well, what are we being set free for? What is it that God's calling us into? Yes, there are things that we need to move from, but what's God calling us into? 
And, and it's captured, I think, by this. It's by enabling us together to be the church. The whole people of God is God's church, lay and ordained uh, in the way that we have it in the Anglican church. We are, we are the church. So it's setting us free to be that in the expressions that we have of that nationally 